Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. Today I will be unboxing the Super Deluxe Edition of Revolver. This is the 4LP with the included uh, bonus 7 inch EP that came out in October of 2022. This is the brand new Giles Martin and Sam O'Kell remix of the album, which is, uh, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I was not expecting this at all, just because of the nature of how a Revolver was originally recorded. But this is super exciting because, um, yeah, this album really needed a new stereo mix because the original mix, if you've heard it, it's a little wonky, but that's just the style they did it back then. So, uh, yeah, to have it on vinyl, plus uh, bonus tracks, unreleased tracks, and also a new mono mix pressed to vinyl is really exciting for those of you who missed out on the 2014 mono edition, which I have here. So um, let's just start with the outside of the box and then get into the contents. Uh, right off the bat, I notice... Um, I, I don't know why I feel like it's backwards to me, but um, yeah, the opening is to the, to the left of the front of the box here. Very similar to uh, how they did it for Let It Be, which I have right here. Same idea. It's almost the same size, pretty much the same size box. The, Let It Be is a little, uh, a little bigger of a box, which is interesting. It's a little longer, to be honest, uh, which... It's a little taller and a little longer. I don't know how well that comes across on camera, but uh, that is interesting. I wonder, huh? Because the contents themselves are very, very similar in terms of the, the format of the book and all that. Uh, I do like the fact that they uh, put a, a on the spine for the book, they did put Revolver as opposed to the Let It Be book, which has nothing. Uh, but we'll get into more of this in a second. But yeah, just a little comparison there. Getting to the box on the front we have a hype sticker uh the new mix by jaws martin sam O'Kell, two session lps of outtakes rehearsals demos and studio chat the original 1966 mono lp uh 180 gram vinyl i think that's throughout um like i said a bonus seven inch ep with paperback writer and rain in the new stereo mixes as well as the original 66 mono mix and then we have a 100 page hardbound book with a forward by paul mccartney with extensive historical and track-by-track -track information, rare photos, memorabilia, and what they don't mention here is that Questlove also does an essay on here, which uh, I'm really excited to get to. Uh, just going around the, the side here, we have the opening. Now, one thing that's kind of annoying uh, right off the bat here is just the fact that um, you have the stereo mix and the mono mix, but there's no, you know, you can't tell from the spine which is which. I, which, you know, if, if, if I look at it, it's, it's par for the course, you know, they didn't really notate that on the spine. I just wish for the update, they, they could have done that. Uh, it's not that big a deal. Obviously, as soon as you pull out the record, it says in the, uh, in the upper corner there, mono or stereo, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I, I think that's, it's not really a big deal. The top of the spine, you got nothing on the side here, got revolver. And then on the bottom, you have the barcode and the legalese stuff. On the back there, you get uh, the complete track listings. And um, you have a sticker here, Made in the Czech Republic. Okay, let's get into the contents here. Uh, come on, there we go. Okay, so we have the stereo. We've got the stereo LP. The bonus track, uh, double LP, the mono LP, and then you have the book. So let's just go in order here. Starting with the stereo LP. Obviously the front cover. There's the back. And comes in a poly-lined white paper sleeve. All right. Here we have side one. Side two. Now, I don't know how well this is coming across, but um, I don't love the finished edge on this LP. Um, it It's rather sharp, um, but that's kind of like par for the course with newer LPs. Uh, I just, I miss the old days of those um, where they have a real nice smooth edge to them. And even here, there's a little, there's like a little, uh, I don't even know what you call that, but just like a little barb right here. 
it's probably not going to come across on camera that well, but uh, yeah, just sort of, you know, I don't know. This is a premium product in my opinion, and it just, it doesn't have that premium feeling in my opinion. And there's another nitpick, which I'll get to in a moment, but just, you know, take a moment and remember how the back of this record looks. All right. All right. Uh, moving on here, we have the revolver sessions, right? So it is a gatefold. I love this, the, the fact that we have some spot varnishing here. Um, as you can see around here, it's a matte, some like a semi-gloss, not even semi-gloss, like a matte paper with a gloss uh, circle here. Uh, beautiful image. Opening up, we have the Beatles, I assume, recording revolver. And then here is the bonus seven inch, just sort of like placed in there, which I don't know. Again, it's just, it's sort of haphazardly put in there. It would have been nice. If this actually had a nice place for this, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I do like the fact that we have a reproduction of a Parlophone company sleeve here. Uh, for, you know, especially those of us in America, we didn't, you know, see this at all. And if we do, you know, it's, we got to pay a premium. So it's kind of nice, uh, especially for a fan like me to, to have something like this. Let's just, uh, let's see if we can get the seven inch out. This is the stereo side. And here we have uh, the mono side. And again, this edge is really, ah, oh, man. <laughs> I almost want to take a file to it. All right, uh, and let's check out the first LP here. Let's see, here we have, we've got side one here. Love these labels. I, f I could be wrong, but these definitely look like, uh, like test pressing labels that were used within, uh, you know, internal department of Parlophone. Um, Pretty cool. And there is side two. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, the feeling on this disc feels much smoother around the edge. So definitely some inconsistencies, although I do feel a little bit of a barb right there. So here is side three and there is side four. And let me show you the back of this cause I forgot to do that. <laughs> As I slip this, Back in there, kind of a tight fit. Actually, doesn't even really fit that well. It's getting bunched up. I'm not sure why. All right, on the back there, get the image. Yeah, it's sort of an, an alternate photo of the Beatles hanging out, taken by Robert Whitaker. Um, yeah, I, I guess we could take a moment and just sort of go through this. Um, you know, I don't love the way this is laid out and I understand why it's laid out this way. Uh, but just the fact that you get the same song in a row a bunch of times. Uh, but I get it. I get it. It's just, um, I don't know. How, how else would you do it? Mix it up, I guess? I don't know. At least this way you can really hear the differences, hear the evolution, uh, because they are in the order of takes here, it looks like. We have take five, unnumbered, take eight. Uh, take one of Love You 2, and then um, it is kind of, yeah, side one, side two, Love You 2 is split up between the sides. Same with your And Your Bird Can Sing. Now we come to the mono edition of the album. There's the front cover, obviously, and here is the back. And this is what I wanted to point out. This is my 2014 mono edition, and it recreates the period correct uh I guess it's flip back. I'm not sure the correct terminology for that, but just how they used to, how uh, EMI used to make uh, the LP covers as opposed to putting this on the inside of the jacket, they put it on the outside. And uh, there's something, it's an extra level of detail that I love about these 2014 mono uh, pressings that we don't get in later pressings. But I don't know, for some reason, it's just like the time period of when this album came out, I guess I was just expecting these LPs to come out this way. I shouldn't have expected that because obviously this is probably more money because this is a technique that is not really used that much. So this definitely makes these uh, 2014 
monopressings stand out for sure. I mean, if somehow this gets separated from the set, you can pretty much tell right away. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a minor nitpick. It's just, uh, I don't know. I, I like this. I like this. Um, and I'm sure there's some of you who prefer this version better, but I think in the end, the fact that we're getting a new way, a, a more affordable way to get rubber, or sorry, to get revolver on mono is the more important thing. And this is just, you know, it's a minor detail. It doesn't matter. Uh, I encourage you, however you can, if get revolver on mono. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the book here. Now, this is something that's really cool. I don't know how well it's gonna come across. I'm gonna try to go slow here, but there is some spot varnishing with some beautiful line drawings. On the back, there's no spot varnishing. But yeah, I, I really, yeah, there it is. You can kind of see it there. And then on the, on the left side, upper left, pretty cool stuff. All right, um, yeah, we're just gonna flip through this book. I have not had a chance to check it out. So you're gonna be checking it out as I check it out in real time. So unfortunately, I don't have a lot of insight to say, but uh, yeah, I think that's okay. So we have the foreword by Paul McCartney here. Introduction by, <laughs> Introduction by Giles. You got a cool picture of George right there, his dad. I'm assuming most of this photography is Robert Whitaker, but could be wrong. At least this session looks like his work. And then you got Questlove. Can't wait to read this. I like the fact that it's titled Evolver because this really was a big step for the band. I mean, so was Rubber Soul to a certain extent, but I mean, gosh, just listen to Tomorrow Never Knows. It's incredible. Huh, that's interesting. You have a drum set here and Ringo's playing this set over here. I wonder, I wonder what the story behind that is. I mean, I knew he had um, several kits. I mean, there was, um, they bought a brand new kit and shipped it to the US the, on their first tour over there. But I just, I wonder what that's all about. And look how like, uh, how off kilter the bass drum is. Obviously they just sort of set it there. It's not there for recording. Not that it would matter for recording, I don't think. But yeah, that's interesting. Hopefully you guys can pause the video and read some of this. That's my intention. But we'll see. There's Michael Lindsay Hogg talking about 10,000 arrows with torch lit. <laughs> no, that comes later. What a cool photo of Paul right there.
man, so much information here. Love this. I love how just so in detail this goes, especially when it goes over the, the CD sessions. Sorry, the, the sessions. Um, I say CD sessions because that's what it's written right there. But I love, I love, um, yeah, there's so much detail right there. Can't wait to just dive into this. Paperback writer, rain. Those are great photos. Here we have a whole um, essay talking about the cover with this great uh, um, <laughs> with this great co comic or I uh, sorry graphic novel uh, by Klaus that I have not gone into yet, but this is fantastic. I'm really excited about this. I really like the the decision to use uh, cursive and then just regular printing. And then here we're talking about how it was received. The infamous trunk photo. <laughs> Seems like it's talking about their uh, final tour. And here we have a little blurb. Okay, this is what I want to read. The 2022 LP of Revolver and Mono was cut directly from the original Analog Master Tape. Any equalization added by Sean McGee was with some modifications guided by the Mastery Notes written in 1966 by Abbey Road cutting engineer Harry Moss. The, okay, and then it goes into the 2022 mono CD was mastered from a 24-bit 96 kilohertz digital recording of the master tape with reference to the same archived art. So that's cool. So it seems like the mono, this new mono and this 2014 mono should be the same. Which is good. I mean, it doesn't sound like there's a digital step in between, but uh, you never know. But it doesn't seem like that is the case. So that's cool. Special thanks, credits, yada, yada, yada. Ha. Great photo. All right, so that's the book. Awesome. Uh, you know, actually, one thing I do want to check real quick. Uh, you'll indulge me. Just give me a second here. Oh yeah. This has a much better feeling. This is the the get back the get back John Glyles Glenn, jo Glenn John's mix. Um, the edges are definitely been sort of lightly smoothed out. You can still see feel some um, some burrs here and there, but these feel a lot better in the hand. I wonder if these are from the same pressing plant. Let's see. Where does it say this was made? Does it say? Made in Germany. Ah, okay. Interesting. Not as sharp, but definitely there is an edge to it. This does not feel as good. This pressing of let it be. So there's definitely some inconsistencies here. Overall, I think this is par for the course. The only nitpicks I have is just sort of the edge feeling of all of these LPs did not feel great in the hand, but then when I went back and looked at uh, my Let It Be box set, uh, it was a little inconsistent there. Some LPs felt much smoother around the edges, others were had that kind of a sharp edge. But these consistently have a sharp edge, and in some cases, kind of a, a, a sharp burr on the end. Um, yeah, so it makes it feel like it was a rush product. Uh, the other nitpick I have is that 7-inch EP. It just doesn't feel like it has anywhere to live. Like, I, I think you could have spent an extra couple bucks and put a little cutout 
in the opening of the book. Uh, I've seen other box sets do that. Um, I think you should have done that, especially for this price. Just throwing it out there. And then lastly, my, my other nitpick is, I, you know, I was expecting this kind of construction, but obviously they didn't go that route. I can understand why, but yeah. That being said though, I am overall very happy with this box set and uh, I can't wait to get into the book, read that cover to cover. Um, look for a couple of videos. I will definitely compare this, uh, this mono copy to this mono copy. I wanna see how similar they are and see if maybe one is better than the other because at this point, uh, this 2014 is getting up there in price almost to the point where you're better off buying this. Uh, so I wanna see if they're pretty comparable if, or if there's something that you should watch out for. Uh, I do wanna say I love the fact that they did include a mono version of the LP because honestly, they didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? Um, I think that's pretty cool. And obviously the other video I wanna make is my thoughts on this new stereo mix. I have a feeling I'm gonna really enjoy it, but I do wanna compare it to a couple other pressings that I have, a uh, 19, early 1980s UK pressing, as well as a, uh, I think it was a 2012 pressing. You know, the last stereo remaster they did, they kept pressing that over the years. This is based off the, 20, or the 2009 digital remaster. I tend to not like those at all. Uh, and considering it's the same mix, uh, yeah, the stereo back then just was not as good. Or it's not as, it's just, it's weird. It's just weird. So I have a feeling I'm gonna really like this new mix, but you never know, sometimes, I don't know. So I'm holding out on that. Uh, so look for those two videos. And until then, I wanna know what you have to say. Did you pick up the LP edition? Did you pick up the digital version, uh, the one on CD? Or did you pick up uh, just a standalone LP? I'm curious to know. Also, you know, let me know if you're waiting for the price to drop a little bit, because I would imagine after the holidays, this is gonna go on sale. So let me know about that. And uh, yeah, that should do it for today. Thank you all so much for watching. But I especially wanna thank my members over on Patreon. I am your Vinyl Geek, and I'll catch you on the flip side.